Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. This is a, one of the shorter sessions at Canolab this year, uh, but we wanted to give growers an experience of, uh, of talking about things that might go wrong with their canola crop on, on any given season. And being this close to the mountains and olds for this location for Canolab, frost is something that a lot of growers deal with on, on any given year. So if you take a look at these four flats in front of us, we've got um, some plants that were froze just yesterday some plants that were froze about five days ago. We're in the middle of February now, so this is a pretty easy thing to do if you really wanted to, but to try to control it for Canolab, we've actually tried to expose these to minus one degrees Celsius for about four hours. Now there's no way to calibrate frost, so don't even try to take that message away with a video, but trying to get you know, enough damage on these, on these plants so that as you look through a progression here, and we're looking at yesterday, as I said, about five days, here we're at about 12 days and this is almost a full month on some of these plants. This was uh, the 23rd of January and we're the 19th of February now. But this isn't unrealistic for what a grower would see in a field. It, it's pretty typical of what you might see when you get some plant stand reduction based on frost. At that point obviously the plants that are dead are dead and gone and the plants that have recovered are starting to become difficult to see what might have gone wrong with them to make them that, that, uh, that thin for a stand. The problem with frost though is that growers always want to manage their crop and they'd like to manage their crop immediately or as soon as they see something's wrong. And on frost, the biggest message that we could give them is that you need to wait at least a week, you know, at least four days. On occasion you might see some, some signs of life or uh, some hope if you want to call it that uh, as early as two days, but it really depends on the temperature and the moisture conditions and the growing conditions that you've got when, you, when you're uh, when you've experienced frost. So this tray, for example, at five days, we can already see some nice regrowth. I don't know if we can catch it on the camera, but you can see that there's some new green leaves and some growing points that are coming back on a number of these plants. And a number of these plants are actually starting to die and shrivel off and the stem has started to show that it's, that it's really, uh, really going to be dead. Unlike uh, some of the grasses, or for example, corn is a, is a great example from further south from us. You can freeze corn off at three leaves and 10 days later have another two or three leaves coming up and really difficult to see that there's really been any damage there. On canola, the growing point's up above the ground and moving upwards as the crop grows. So if you experience a frost on the growing point and it's dead, your, your plant is dead. So there's really no, there's no second chance with canola in the respect that it's got one growing point to lose uh, as, as, a young, as a young plant. The good news is that it's, it's a really resilient plant and one of the things we've done with these plants in front of you is not take it out of a greenhouse like environment in the middle of February and slide it into the freezer but also to move it from a warm greenhouse to a cool greenhouse to a cold greenhouse and then slide it in the freezer. If you don't acclimatize the, uh, the plants and try to set up a demonstration like this for frost you end up with results that look a, a quite, a, quite a bit more like this. And it's really difficult to talk about frost recovery in a half hour session at Canolab if you don't have any recovery. So one of the changes that we made as we were starting to in, develop our frost recipe was uh, this particular tray got a similar, a similar treatment to some of the others, but didn't have any, uh, any kind of buffering or, or ground. If you think about your field, obviously your field has something below it. So uh, in the case of the, the flats on the table in front of me, we put them in a, in a large tub of water and had some thermal mass or some insulation below them so that the injury is a little more like in the field where it's coming from above the crop. But even with that, we can sometimes see coming out of the freezer that the center of the tray or the edges of the tray won't have as much frost. And frost, even in a field, is patchy. So you'll see that on occasion it'll be worse on the hilltops. It maybe lost their heat a little faster or a, a lot of times it's worse in low areas of the field because that's where the cold air sinks to. But really hard to predict what parts of which field will be, will be most affected by frost because it seems like on any given year black soil might be better or worse, a lot of trash cover might be better or worse. If the soil's warmed up underneath the trash cover and it radiates heat for a longer time, that's a benefit to you. If that trash has kept the soil cool and it just hasn't had a chance to warm up yet, that might be a negative thing. So frost is one of those things that's really hard to predict and the really only take home message is if you watch the presentation at Canolab, the, the title slide was go fishing. Uh, and that's a bit tongue in cheek or maybe a bit of a joke, but it's pretty important to not make a decision in the first two to four or even six days and take the time 
to get down on your hands and knees and try to decide what kind of plant stand you're, you're going to have because almost all of the time a decision to go reseed on canola, especially if you've got something like this, would be the wrong decision. You know, it'll depend on the time of year, the kind of moisture conditions you have. Do you have another crop you really want to grow on the 25th of May if that happens to be when you're, when you're trying to make the decision? But to step back and say, do I have a minimum number of plants, which in a lot of cases would be about two plants per square foot. If you had two plants evenly across the whole field and you're looking at, uh, at well past seeding, it's unlikely that you'll be further ahead trying to restart that field and lose three weeks of growth. Mm -hmm.